News to order. Good morning. I am Council Member Karen Koslowitz, Interim Chair of the Women's Issues Committee. I would first like to thank Speaker Mark Fiverito for her leadership and support <laughs> on these issues. Her commitment to women's equality has been instrumental in moving New York City in the right direction. I'd also like to recognize Council Member Lori Cumbo, who is not here today because she recently gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. While Council Member Cumbo is away on maternity leave, I will be serving as the interim chair for this committee. I'd also like to thank the sponsors of the legislation, the Speaker and Council Members Drum and Landa, and of course, thank you to the members of the Committee on Women's Issues that are present. <coughs> I'd like to recognize Council Member Elizabeth Crowley, and I'd like to uh, recognize Council Member Ben Kalos, and also Council Member Danny Drum, who's not on the committee but has legislation before us today. And also the committee staff, Council Aminta Kilowan and policy analyst Joan Pavone. We are here to vote on three bills that would address ways we as a city can identify and combat gender and racial inequity. Proposed intro number 1500B, sponsored by the speaker, is a bill that would require certain city agencies to complete gender, racial, and other equity assessments. <coughs> that, excuse me, my allergies are killing me today. Proposed intro number 1512A, sponsored by Council Member Drum, would have required that certain city agencies provide their employees with trainings on implicit bias, structural racism, cultural competency, and structural inequity, as well as how, el how these inter sect with gender, race, and sexual orientation, and how these factors impact the work of the respective agencies. Proposed intro number 1520B, sponsored by Council Member Lander, would require that the Social Indicators Report, which is published annually, be expanded to include information on equity with regard to gender, race, income, and sexual orientation and be retitled as the Report on Social Indicators Equity. <clears throat> Over the past three years, the Council has worked to address structural inequity through our support of measures like the Criminal Justice Reform Act, the Young Women's Initiative, the Nurse Family Partnership Program, and year-round and summer jobs to provide our city's youth with opportunities for a brighter future. But there's always room for improvement. A truly great city leaves no person behind. The reality is that though some might call institutional racism and structural inequity myths, they persist even in a city as progressive as ours. Women and people of color continue to be marginalized, and we have very limited data to prove this, even though we know that it is the truth. Assessment tools and benchmarks are therefore <clears throat> critical to dismantling these pervasive issues. We have to engage in a deeper analysis of why gender and racial inequities exist and what we can do to combat this as a city through targeted programming and services, for example. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to give the floor over to Council Member Drum to give a statement about his legislation. Thank you, uh, Interim Chair Karen Kostlowitz and also Chair Kumbo for hearing this package of legislation. Mm -hmm. I also want to acknowledge Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for steadfastly advancing the issue of equity throughout her tenure. Along with our colleague, Councilmember Lander, I am very happy to be part of this effort today. Training staff of city agencies to become proficient in cultural competency is critical to promoting equity. Intro 1512A 
requires employees of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, the Administration for Children's Services, and the Human Resources Administration to receive training on implicit <coughs> bias, discrimination, cultural competency, and structural inequity with regard to gender, race, and significantly, sexual orientation. The benefits are manifold. Such training will give already hardworking public servants an enriched perspective on the populations they serve while making these communities feel as they should, that government is working for them. Training will also increase understanding among employees in an increasingly diverse work environment. Finally, employment at DOH, MH, ACS, and HRA will become even more attractive to prospective job applicants from all backgrounds. I am very proud of our city during these trying times for taking the national lead on the issue of equity, and I encourage all committee members to vote in favor of these measures. Thank you very much. And with that, we'll call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on women's issues, introductions 1500B, 1512A, and 1520B. All items are coupled. Chair Kozlowitz. I vote aye on all. Crowley. I, I vote aye, and congratulations to Councilmember Drama on this important bill. Thank you. Kalos. Aye on all, and congratulations, and thank you for your advocacy. My vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. We are going to <coughs> hold the meeting of the roll call for another uh, 15 minutes. And with that, this meeting is adjourned.